Welcome to this narrated video of the Lighter Therapy series. Subtitles are not strictly necessary, and I might just let YouTube auto-generate them for me. The results might be hilarious. This letter uh, does not belong to me, which is why it was not randomly chosen in a sweet battle royale. But for the sake of privacy, I did cover up the name, but I had no idea what was inside the package aside from the lighter. Uh, for those who have seen my other videos, uh, you know that my right hand and, and forearm are featured prominently, and I make no apologies. The knife is just a Kershaw with a tungsten glass breaker. Kershaws are, are, are good value for the money, and uh, I don't feel bad if I give them away or lose them. So, aside from that letter there, um, I actually was surprised to find an extra little package. So, in the package, actually, uh, it was a handmade leather cover with a Field Notes notebook inside. I'm truly grateful for the unexpected gift, and I will make use of it for as long as uh, I draw breath. The lighter um, itself was uh, one of the ones I previously lost in an auction, so I was actually pleasantly surprised for an opportunity to restore it. So the lighter itself here is um, for Trojan Machine Works, uh, located in Montebello, California. Uh, Montebello actually sta means a pretty mountain in Spanish. Um, so a quick inside, a quick peek inside the lid, you can see that it's really oily with soot and ash. The insert was also pretty jammed, so I had to pull out one of my tools here. The tool is just a, a simple brass rod bent into a U shape. If uh, if uh, this thing had required any more any more uh, force, I would have used a different tool, which is a little bit fussier, but it's it's much more effective than, than the brass rod. So the insert is a hollow rivet uh, insert with a 2517191 patent number. So that commonly makes it a, what is commonly referred to as a 1959 through 1964 insert. A quick look at the bottom, and its vintage is 1961. The dots are really hard to see on the left-hand side. So as I took apart the insert to take out all the filling, so the spring was in good shape, or the spring assembly, if you will. No flint came out, so that assumes either no flint or, or obviously no flint, or clogged and a quick light test shows that that indeed the flint tube is clogged so my drill bit tool here is actually pre-made so that it only gets to a depth of the length of the flint tube and touching barely touching the wheel so I can use it as a depth gauge to determine how bad the clog is so I remove the felt pad and the cotton rayon balls cotton or rayon balls first it was a little understuffed and the wick was completely missing. The inside of the insert, nice and clean and in good shape. Cam spring felt good. There is a small ding on the case lid, uh, but you really can't fix those tiny little dings. The hinge pin apparently was replaced with a, with a pin of some kind that was bent into shape, into like a U-shape to keep it from coming out. You can see me attempting to try to remove it here. I straightened out the pin and then fiddled around to push the, the head past the case so I could pull it out. So the hinge pin was actually just a dressmaker's pin that had been cut and then bent so it couldn't uh, easily come out. That's also why the hinge was really, really loose. I just added that hinge pin to my, or the makeshift hinge pin to my collection of not Zippo and not hinge pin hinge pins.
taking a quick look now at the hinge barrels on the case bottom. The barrels actually look pretty good. I used a 1.1 millimeter rod at this point to gauge the barrels followed by a quick check with a 1.2 millimeter rod. I find that 1.2 millimeter rods are close to ideal for Zippo lighters made after about 1956. Okay, time to drill out the flint. I did notice the insert there was a little bit bent. We'll fix that later. So the drill bit here is a, a 3 32nd inch drill bit and it's ideal for flint tubes. Mine has a shank on it already so I can easily uh, snap it onto a socket and uh, give, give myself a little bit more leverage. Thankfully in this case the, the clog wasn't too, uh, too uh, caked up and too super hard so it came out fairly easily. That's one of the problems with flints if you leave them inside of the flint tube for too long. Especially in, in humid environments the, the flint can actually start breaking down and eventually as it dries out it basically packs up the flint tube like a, like a paste or a mortar and eventually you have to drill it out in some fashion to get it clear. This one did not take too long at all. This is a uh, not unusual but it's not always the case. Quick light test and we can now see that the flint tube is clear. Okay now on to my favorite part and that is the ultrasonic bath. So in this case all parts were cleaned together because there was no paint on the etch. The, yes, that's my coffee mug. Time lapse is running at approximately 16 times normal speed. I've started using that uh, that field notes notebook for logging uh, various uh, lighter maintenances that I perform. So thank thank you again. You can now really see how filthy that water is. Um, actually, this was uh, one of two cycles of ultrasonic cleanings, and the resulting water was was very very murky afterwards. So the solution I'm using actually is just a combination of simple green diluted with some warm water. Okay, so after the ultrasonic, after the second ultrasonic cleaning, the part still needed a little bit of brushing. Uh, ultrasonic cleaning generally gets them pretty clean. Well, clean enough for government work, but it still requires a little bit extra manual uh, agitation to remove some of the soot. Just a quick time lapse of some of that work inside the lid. The brush itself is just a small nylon brush that I attach to a a custom made uh, exacto blade holder. Okay, quick look inside with the flashlight again, and we can see that the surface has been effectively clean. There are definitely spots where you can see that the that the chimney scraped up against the inside of the lid. I tried to use a small brass brush there to try to maybe tr clean up the little edges where the where the chimney contacted the lid, but largely it was ineffective. Now the same sort of thing was done with the base, except I, I noticed something a little bit odd. Um, so the base has the normal buildup, but on the corner there underneath that hinge, you can see that there's something kind of caked on. I, I wasn't quite sure what it was, but it looked like some sort of a, some sort of a, a residue buildup. 
Same thing again, just a time lapse of scrubbing with, with a nylon bristle. Nice shot of my hand, yet again. Trying to scrape it away with a with a wooden pick to see if I could have any better results on it. Okay, the, you can see the in the corner there. Good close look at it. Again, there's a there's some sort of a uh, hard crusty residue buildup. At this point, I swapped to I think a, a steel bristle. To try and get get the the crusty the crusty bits out. So it's a little bit better, but it is working. But uh, obviously, you can see it's going to require a few more cycles of that. I made several passes with that steel brush inside the case and um, this was probably the last one, I'd maybe the fourth one. Just drying out the inside now to take a look at it. Again, just gentle scrubbing, you don't want to go too hard, uh, you don't want to try to overdo it right from the start. And so here's the final look inside the case. You can still see a little bit of residue inside, but you know that's that's more than good enough. Um, it's nice and clean for the most part, without being too harsh. Okay, now on to the insert itself. The insert again was in in relatively good shape, not too worn out. Uh, not the writing on it was still pretty good small dent on the side of the body of it of the body of the insert that could be easily fixed but you can see even though it's been run through the ultrasonic cleaner the ch chimney itself tends to tends to not lose that oily soot i tried i tried wiping it away initially the goal here is to not use too much of a of a harsh abrasive method to remove the the soot because if you do so you'll end up dulling the the shine of the chimney which the chimney is usually the part that people look at the most, the, the the shiniest part inside the lighter. So initially all I'm doing is using a brass brush and just kind of going with the strokes of the of the chimney itself. So if you look at the if you look at a chimney, typically you can see particular lines of, of friction either where the chimney was rubbing against the lid or the machining marks where the uh, the equipment was used to to make the chimney into a curve so i'm basically following those lines as much as possible as i gently brush brush it with a brass brush and typically that's enough to get to get the uh, insert clean Okay, after scrubbing the inside, quick quick look inside of it. That's after uh, scrubbing it with the brass brush on the inside. The the camp spring looks good. The wick eyelet looks good. Inside of the chimney is nice and clean. So now it's time to straighten out the the insert's body just a little bit. It it was just a slightly bent. Um, I like to have them nice and straight. So I'm basically using parallel jawed, smooth jawed uh, pliers to basically crush it slightly and then bend it back into shape. So a quick time lapse of the of the refilling process. I like to position my wicks in a very centered parallel manner, and that uh, the method for how to do that can be seen elsewhere in another previous video.
but you can see basically I am centering the wick inside of it, inside of the insert using two sheets of plastic and then packing the, the, the filling around it on either side. And by basically creating that loop, that allows for essentially an ideal placement of the wick inside of the insert. After the, after the flint test, I use a piece of, of rotary trimmer line, just in a, a just round line, cut into small pieces like flint, and I use that for storage purposes. Easy to spot. So the hinge itself um, documented the process of creating the hinge pin elsewhere, but uh, I did create a new hinge pin. I believe this was 1.2 millimeter, was the final pin I decided to, to use. And uh, once inserted, you can see that Actually, this was the 1.1 millimeter initial test, and you can see that not only the, does the hinge, the hinge pin's kind of loose, but also the the hinge itself did not line up very well by itself. So, regardless of of, of the hinge pin, this will have to be realigned. So, at this point, I've already inserted the new hinge pin, and I'm just basically tapping it in gently, the last little bit. This is the 1.2 millimeter hinge pin. So the hinge is a little bit tighter. I straightened out the hinge, the hinge barrel so that the lighter would properly close. The hinge loops themselves did feel a little bit loose, so I went ahead and tightened them up just a little bit using a, a another specialty pair of pliers. Most of these tools involved in, are from the jewelers, hob, jeweler hobbyists. Um, or other specialty tools of, the, of such. If you have any interest in your own tools like this, please contact me. Again, the goal is not to try to crush the hinge loops. That, would, that wouldn't be good in the long run, but just to give them just a slightly, uh, slightly tighter feel. So using smooth jaw pliers there to give them tighten them up a little bit more again from the inside, and that's uh, that's about good enough. You can get lighters even tighter than this one, but generally that's there's a point of diminishing effort. Okay, so finally, now that it's all done, hinge better than you is it's as good as if not better than a a new lighter insert straightened out packed new new old stock wick quick test fit in and out make sure it slides in nicely opening it feels good nice and springy with a nice zippo click and that's pretty much about it for this lighter nothing left but to uh document that the, the work is done on this thing. Thank you again for the notepad. All of the procedures that may have been rushed through in this video have been covered elsewhere in my other videos which are a little bit more leisurely in their process. If you have any questions of course I am reachable primarily on Reddit that would be the easiest place to to reach me and ask questions. And thank you for watching.